Well, thanks everyone for attending another Recruiter Therapy. Um, just want to give you guys an update on what's coming up ahead on the higher easy side. Um, first and foremost, Monday, I don't know if you guys attended or not, but the conference that we put out, the FRBR conference, and some of these individuals spoke at it, it was mind blowing how many people signed up and interacted within that conference within a two weeks uh, time frame. So just want to say thank you for the support. Um, and the community says thank you in itself. A couple updates on there. All of the sessions will be uploaded to YouTube um, by the end of the day for every single session. So if you've missed it and you want to revert back to a specific session or review all of them, um, they should be up on YouTube, on our YouTube page. And I'll put a post up on our LinkedIn and our Facebook redirecting you to that playlist. Um, but that should be up and running by the end of the day. Second thing, we have another conference on April 2nd with another group of presenters. And this is pretty unique for the recruiting community because all of these individuals, maybe they have spoken, maybe they haven't spoken, but all of them are open to work in the recruiting field. So they're stepping out, getting uncomfortable into the spotlight to share their thoughts, their resources, and in in turn, trying to get noticed by other employers. So here at Hire Easy, we're trying to bridge that gap from company to candidate and really get people back to work. So anybody that's interested in doing it in the future, we're going to start doing this on a more current basis, uh, maybe like once a month, once every other month. So feel free to shoot me an email, put my information into the chat but we want to get you connected as quickly as possible to set up for the next um, event. But other than that, uh, just want to kick it off to the group and see how the week's gone. Well, actually speaking of events, <clears throat> Dan, is, is there something going on in your life right now? Well, I mean, everything's going on, Steve. Oh, uh, come if... on, come on, Daniel. Oh, well, I mean, it, it, just, as we go on the March Madness, um, you know, topic. I'm filling my own basketball team, you know, any minute with uh, number five baby on the way. You know, it could be in the next couple hours and not in the next couple of days. So um, I might get that call any minute. So if I leave this call, Steve will take over and, you know, number five, I'll have a whole basketball team at home. Dude, so, is this legit real time? Yeah. I didn't yep. know. Congratulations. Yeah. That's I don't awesome. think you're old enough to have five children. You know, I look like I'm 12, and that's I think you... I'm gonna just take that for the rest of my life. I are hope you... that's the case. Are you like have you been on a different planet though? Like, have you read the news? Do you know like, you are aware of what you're bringing this kid into, right? That's so it's, true. It's too late. He's, it's he's too bringing late his kid into one of like the one of the most unusual economies for talent acquisition professionals ever, Jason. I think that's what you're referring to, right? Yeah, clearly. No, I think we, we need more good people in the world. So that's amazing. Please. That's also true. You know, I, I just have to have, you know, five sorcerers behind me to just build an <laughs> empire. So, you know, right out of the gate, Watching. they're going to be a part of this community, whether they like it or not. Recruiting is like the new farming. You know, pimping you your, pimping your kids for money. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a tech event. we had mini bar here. It's a tech event every spring. It's April end of April at Best Buy headquarters. And a friend of mine, um, she works at AWS or works with AWS. And uh, she brought her baby and I said, okay, I'm going to sign your kid to a contract now, post date it for 18 and a half years from now. So that I become their agent when they're all nerdy and geeky. Instead of going to college, they're going to go, they're going to go code or whatever we'll be doing in 18 and a half years from now. And she's like, deal. And I'm like, see, I signed my first, I signed my first one, my first player. Love it. Love that. So yours is my number two, by the way. I get dips. <laughs> so, so how how's this to start the conversation? I I, I was speaking uh, earlier today with Ryan Fish, <clears throat> who's doing the sec, who's uh, talking about the second, and um, you know, I'm curious about the feedback that each of us, or Hire Easy Daniel, or anybody else has received from people who attended. You know, what do they think? You know, of of, of this event. Um, I, you know, I, I'm wondering if we could bring Ryan Fish on for just 
one quick moment. Mr. Fish, bring you on. We need more Minnesota folk. We need more we we need more land of lakes people. Uh, I did read somewhere that it was really, really good. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. Sorry. Are we talking but about the event or Land O'Lakes? The, ev the, the, the event. The butter. So, 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 Ryan, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, t tell, tell the throng here, you know, what we were talking about earlier today, in terms of what you did uh, as, you know, as an attendee uh, during and post. Yes. FDR. Thank you, Stephen. Um Hi, Paul. Um, I uh, w was talking to Steve about the fact that, uh, you know, I, I really have been listening to these recruiter therapy and, you know, I know I need to be better about um, working my network and being able to, you know, connect with people and talk with people. And it doesn't have to be, you know, anything huge. Uh, and I don't have to be necessarily asking them for anything, but just saying, hey, this is where I'm at. Um, talking about, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for work? Are you looking for clients? Um, are you happy where you're at? And just, you know, looking to connect with people. Um, but out of just this last event we had on Monday. Hold on, I we're not using the word just anymore, remember? Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely Why? right. I apologize. It's okay. Um, Why? <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. Brian, keep going. Okay. I connected with over 170 new people just from that event. What? And I've already had more than two dozen uh, networking calls. Oh, I've got God. calls scheduled over the next three weeks, and I'm continuing to schedule people. Uh, so I'm connecting with people. So it was a huge event to connect with peers mm -hmm. that are out there. Uh, and I'll tell you what, people have been so gracious. And I've learned so much from so many people. And, you know, surprisingly enough, some of them have been from people I didn't necessarily expect to get, you know, as much as I did from. Uh, I talked with one person that she's only been in uh, recruitment HR for three years. But hold on, as... hold on. Did she say at all like what that's been like to be getting into it during these three years? She did. And that was really interesting to, to talk about that. But what I found was really interesting is she just happened to mention, I said, I, I see that you got a PhD in animal science. And I go, funny enough, I worked at Cargill. And I said, she, you know, as I was talking to her, she was, you know, mentioning how she was, you know, into male um, reproduction um, with some of these animals where most people are looking at female and I started talking about a specific oh, specific things within that field oh. just because I recruited for people just like her you know while I was at Cargill and and she's like I don't believe that you even understand all this stuff and I'm like yeah I, I said I I had to recruit people like you and she's like I would love that's my holy grail is Cargill you know and so just you know completely unexpected and then you know when it came back i'm like you know you may or may not have any um you know specific sites or specific things or tools but that's the other thing i, I kept on hearing over and over and over nicole i know you and i connected and talked about this too that people keep coming back saying hey i i wasn't getting um access to you know these different tools and it's great that they bring them up but they go so fast in these conference calls that you know where do i go to get that so i actually have started to document that and i you know showed steve today and he gave me a ton more that i have to add to it and i'm going to change the format but if you go look at my um uh, linkedin account it's going to be updating slowly here uh thanks to steve uh we used chat gpt to actually uh change my banner picture so that's you know a lot more interesting will catch attention and he, he did a great job thank you for helping me with that uh, <laughs> um but um i also will be adding to that featured section uh and continuing to try to update as i do these networking calls the um different types of tools that are out there. Um, and whether that's, you know, trying to create links for higher EZs for recruiter therapy and other things like that, whether it's doing research 
uh, to try to find candidates and, and companies and things that way, whether it's you know, AI type stuff to rewrite your resume. I, I, as I continue to go, I, I've found so much more categories to kind of list on there. Um, and I'm hoping to build this out and that it'll be a resource that not only will drive traffic to my LinkedIn profile, but you know, I'm also hoping that this will be something meaningful uh, to our larger. Group. I have a I have a selfish request, but I think sure. it, it's but it's for everybody. Yeah. Can you, whether it's a week or two or a month, it doesn't it does not urge it. Sit down at one point for a couple of hours, a half a day, and start listing out the theme. Yes. Like, here's yep. what I've heard in a hundred plus conversations with, because mm. we don't have that info. Like, we have yeah. a lot of our anecdotes. We have a lot of, and I get that that some, like, Steve mm. has a lot of calls with a lot of people, and Nicole's doing it too. But I mean, like, I would love to, like, like, here's how, here's how it, people are saying now versus how they felt six months ago, or here's how they're optimistic for the rest of the 2024 or not. Sure. Because like you're getting like real, literally real time data. You know, I am. Holy crap, dude! I'm proud of you. You're, by Thank the way, you. you're a good dude. Yeah, and and I can't say enough positive things about Paul. Um, you've always been great, and you know, at our local events and things where we connect, and you've always been willing to help as well. So thank you. I really appreciate that. You're a good dude. Oh, this thank is you. awesome. Yeah. So a great event, I got to say, from Monday. So for all the work that all of you invested and, in, you know, speakers, um, uh, it was great. I'm really looking forward to the one in the second as well. And and, that, um, and I actually have a follow up question for you, because this is what I've been doing with yeah. people who've been reaching out to me post event is what did we not talk about that you would mm. have wanted to have heard about? Okay. Do you have a something that we didn't do or a topic or a theme or a something? Sure. Like no, but it was there one. <laughs> oh, from my standpoint. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So sorry. I didn't. I didn't phrase that. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I was gonna say I can always ask people as I'm talking to them. You know, people have been well, asking. Even that too. But like, I, mean, I can provide feedback. For, but did we miss something for you? For me, um, you know, one thing that I found, and again, it, it's, it's one of those things where I'm kind of embarrassed sometimes to share. You know, where I have my weaknesses. Uh, I know I shouldn't be. I'm in a safe space you know, with my peers, but, um, uh, you know, actually applying the AI um, and being able to do it and like Steve taking the time today to show me the simple going in and typing in uh, what I'd want that picture to be mm -hmm. and translating those words into an actual picture uh, just based on, you know, what it was, I, I had no clue. I've never seen that before. And being able to actually kind of do a step-by-step -step type thing, even if it's just a couple of small examples, um, or, you know, I know I talked with uh, Chris um, from um, that had, you know, also Steve uh, had um, some Boolean search terms for, as far as searching the ATSs and searching, you know, some other things that way as well. Um, and I'm like, God, I hadn't seen that before. So being able to have access to, you know, applying some of those tools, walking through it, showing it, you know, actually doing it, not just talking about it at the super high level, but maybe the ability to dig in on a couple of things and, and see what that result or how it compares to other things. So here's the, here's the deal. You can say that thought. you could say, you just said, I'm paraphrasing that. Yep. Like maybe you didn't have this skill to be able to create the image that I'm looking at right now for the banner on your LinkedIn profile. Just right. so you know, yes. you are now 10 steps further along than I am because I don't know how to do this at Me all. Neither. And, and, and my point is, is to take a little time, I think, to slow down oh. in one or more of these to take a, an extra couple of steps to actually demonstrate and show a couple of things like Ooh, that. That's cool would have impact so we can apply that to either our job search to looking for candidates to updating our profiles and, and representing ourselves uh, just that that'd be my two cents that's cool thank that's you a good, that's a good idea i mean i i, I also was responding to as many you know post posts as i could see and i was i was asking people was there one epiphany that's going to make a difference for you hmm mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and it was more, it wasn't, I, I wasn't looking for anything. I mean, this is, 
I mean, I had my favorite talks and, uh, you know, and, and, and Nick Holes was just. Yeah. Powerful. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, but, you know, but, but Tawanda, Tawanda hit her, yep. hit her mark. Um, uh, Paul always, I mean, every, I mean, every, I mean, literally everybody was just tacked to, look, this is, try this, do this one thing, be a little different when you know, don't forget. By the way, there, that was something I was going to suggest, Dan, um, even and for the one on April 2nd too, uh, make it very distinct that everyone, when they're doing their thing, has to give like one, two or three things to do this week or next week, right? Like, a, because by the time you have eight speakers, you've got 24 things to do. Like that's, that's a month or two's worth of work. Like, but here's what to do. Because sometimes I listen, if I go to a source con, I am so brain dead by the end. I can't remember half the stuff. I go home and I'm feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> but if everybody could put like two or three things, very specific to do's also might be really helpful. By the way, the blessing that I had for the event was being able to go after Shan and just being able to enjoy everybody the rest of the day. I didn't have to think about the video and I didn't, was so awesome because for me, just as a human to take it all in, that was cool. So <clears throat> go first if you can. <laughs> Because that's always you, go first the and then you can rip the bandaid off and then you can relax. That's oh, 100% so good. Sure. But to Paul, to um, your point, to your point, Paul, I think it was Jason. I, I don't know if you were there. ERE San Diego, 2000, 2017. I don't recall I if you there. were there or not. You were there. That is, that's one where I did the closing keynote, I think, or was it 18? And 18. was 18. it 18? Okay. I did the closing keynote there. And what I ended up doing was, listening to every every person's talk the ones i could not almost the other ones i got their decks and i summarized look you know we pay a lot of money for these things you know we go to these things yeah to have something that we can use and so i came up with each person you know two things that based on their talk that you could implement right away monday morning when you get love back. that yeah i so, remember that so to the extent that, uh, you know, we can, you know, Dan, you get get all the decks ahead of time and and everybody who's going to speak on on the second, you know, after after your deck is done and you're set on what you want to say, sit back and go. Now, if, if, if I heard this mm. and I and I went to my office, you know, the next day and my, my manager said, OK, well, you went there. Okay, what do you got? And you say not two things, one thing. One tactical thing, changing changing a way of thinking, um, mm. you know, changing the way of think of, of the way others think, is something that requires um, you know varying um, uh, dropperfuls of emotional intelligence, <laughs> amongst other things. <laughs> but tactically, this is what I'm going to do that I haven't done before. Yeah, we can get that. We can start setting the stage for. You know any number of um, of these events moving forward. Let it be the place where everyone has has something to learn. Um, you know, everyone, everyone, we want everyone to go. Damn, I didn't think of that. Yeah, we can. If we can get to that point, Jason, we're good. Steve, I think you're. I think you're onto something. And Dan, if there's space, even to save a few minutes at the end of the day to have somebody do this. Um, Steve, what you're talking about, I saw Torin Ellis do something at an event. Yeah, he's, that, done, he's done a great but, job at those two. Yeah. So, and he had, you know, he has people write down on their cards, like something, you know, that you can do, that you can go activate today to make a change. And he had people read them out loud. And the first folks who read them, they did exactly what he said not to do. It was, well, the team's got to think about this differently. Well, we need, but he's like, no, no, no. What are you going to do? And, you know, and this was, you know, there's a couple hundred people in the room. And so, you know, I raised my hand from the back just to give him, I'm like, all right, like someone's going to give him what he's asking for. I speak, I'm not afraid of a crowd standing in the back of a dark room. I struggled to declare what I was going to do differently in front of that audience. It was hard. Mm. I do this for a living. Like I do change management for a living. <laughs> it was hard. So um, I think you're really onto something and I don't want to underestimate what it takes to do it. So Dan, if there's space, it might really be interesting to pull 
a little bit of that into the end of the day, in addition to like a summary that goes out just to give people a chance to kind of, you know, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to go do this differently on Monday. Well, give them a chance to actually do it differently right then and there, feel how hard it is. So they're emotionally prepared for making that change Monday morning. That's cool. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I'll tell you a little story. Last source con in Minneapolis, Paul actually gave me that opportunity and a spotlight oh, in real time to apply what I was learning into the session. So to give the audience, you know, was it eight, eight months ago, I was still laid off. I wanted to still get involved in the source con, went to the conference, was on the greed squad, whatever. Um, and it was all about AI and how to impact your job search. And in real time, I was utilizing some of the things that the speaker was saying and incorporating into my outreach to the hiring managers as I was applying to jobs. Put the job description in AI. I put the LinkedIn profile in AI. I put my resume in AI. And I said, hey, give me a three bulleted email to this specific hiring manager. Did that in real time. Got a response back from the hiring manager five minutes after I applied with that strategy. And then Paul's like, hey, can you like- Here's the microphone. (laughs) <laughs> and he's like, he gave me the microphone in front of the big stage when the whole panel, so I'm talking to a couple hundred people about this, but applying it in real time is so important to these conferences. So I want to just give that kudos to Paul. Um, and it's the, one of the reasons why I'm here today. So thank you for that. But the application after conferences, it only happens if you, like mm. you said, write it down and then- go beyond just a social media like comment and really reach out. You know, Ryan said he had conversations with people from the conference. How many, and Ryan? Doing that networking. It's crazy. Amazing. This is the, sorry, this it, is, was, it was 170. This is, wow. when I say stupid, I mean it in a good way. Ryan, that's gotta be one of the stupidest cool things I've ever heard somebody do. <laughs> Thank like, you. Damn. Thank you. You know, it, it, that's another thing I guess I, I would request or put out there would be really nice is rather than having to put the links in the text or on the side or the chat, it'd be nice if there was a way to be able to get a list of the people, either say, yes, I'm willing to share my info or not, mm-hmm. and and then oh, yeah. be able to just blast that to the group so we don't have to waste time during the call or be distracted at all. We can just, you know, send out you know, those invitations and try to connect with those people later on. Just a thought. Curious if, so if you, you are signing up for an event, you put your name, your contact information, would you want another form saying, put your LinkedIn profile, your info, if you want future connections or networking opportunities within that group, that's what you're saying? Exactly. Or even just a simple check mark, you know, if you'd like to opt in to have your uh, contact information shared or even just your LinkedIn profile to initiate that, you know, and then we can, it's the same thing as I'm sharing the link here. It would just save a lot of time and be a lot easier. Here's an asterisk for you though, Dan. When I had the Minnesota recruiters group from 07 to 12, I uh, I asked everybody, is it cool if I share the 10 D list with everybody? And then I had to say that if you're a search or a consulting firm in this room and you turn this into a sales call, I will out you publicly for spamming people. Like, mm-hmm. and one did one time and I was ruthless. So it would be this, that you have to say to people on your honor and your trust as a human, you will not turn this into a spam or a call list. And because at higher easy, we will literally shoot you down on LinkedIn. It's and easy. Like, it's as easy as that, Paul, yeah. right? If if you have the, the rules on the site or yep. wherever, just to say, don't do it, you know, you'll be banned for life. <laughs> I mean, yep. I will shame you to no end because, because Ryan, you're right. your house. <laughs> <laughs> because Ryan, Ryan you're right. To do, Ryan, to make curious, it all how, Ryan, curious, how did you find out about that event? Did, like, what ways did you, you're like, oh, Higher Easy is doing a, uh, an event. Like, how did you figure it out? Very simple, Paul. Uh, 
things were posted on his page. Okay. Uh, he's definitely someone I follow, someone I respect, someone I know has got, you know, a number of job postings, but also different events. He's at every event known to man. Um, I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, he'll show pictures uh, for six events in like 24, 48 hours. And it's like, ah, how? Um, but he does it. And, and you know, he, he's very visible. And so I, I watch a lot of that. And even to that point, if I saw what he would be going to in the future, I'd probably be at more of those events to be able to, you know, be right there next to you, you know, trying to connect. And I don't want to turn this to the Ryan, Ryan and Paul show, but are you going to the Mintern event next Tuesday? I'm not at this point but i've been okay. thinking about it i i did okay. see it come through I, i'm cool. thinking about it yeah so what i'd like to do is Thank test you. this theory you saw it on on social media from somebody posting it i'm i'm putting in a post into the chat right now and it's highlighting that april 2nd um event and all you have to do is one sign up and then share that post and you're going to be entered to win some higher easy swag. But I want to see how this plays out. If everybody within this community shares it and see if we can make an impact like the previous conference on Monday made an impact on Ryan. Let's see if this community puts their money where their mouth is. Everybody can reshare some job postings, but is that really helping others? Or are we going to give them a platform? to speak and get uncomfortable. So they have something to show for. So when the hiring manager is saying, what have you been doing when you've been out of work and got laid off? They can say, well, I actually spoke at a conference about this and it's more than just a resume. It's what else are you doing? Show me instead of tell me, Brian, you always tell me that. What, show me what you're doing, except instead of telling me what you're doing. So let's spread this word, just share this post out and see if we can make an impact to the community. I just did it. Love it. D yeah. Dan, that you are this sharp while you've got a baby on the way is freaking shocking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> get, it, get it in now. Get it in now while you still got it. He's all like, so my five. Five. He's <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> hey, let's let, 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 let's maybe, maybe I'm this sharp because like Shannon's not here. I'm just like being like my myself, you know. Oh god. Well that's what that, that's what she's hoping. You know, that's what she wants, by the way. Can we, can we take one step back and go to this just thing that I missed? Oh, yeah. What's going on with just? Is it like another F-bomb type thing? We're not supposed to say the word just? Yes. So okay. the idea was that during the, the thing on Monday, I heard a number of us. And I, I think I did it once. And it graded in my brain. Like, it, it was like abrasive. That frequently we are saying that we are just in recruiting we are just in sourcing we are just in hr and maybe it only got mentioned five times during the day, right and it dawned on me that many of times i've heard people say that though whether it's this or in any other part of their life right i can't see what steve's doing but um <laughs> because thankfully i have angie on the big part right now not the little steve up there um but we need to say we need to stop saying just because i would suggest and I have been, and then I'll, this is my rant. If you saw my LinkedIn post, I did it like, we're doing this thing today. Um, the Wall Street Journal did an article March 11th that I hadn't seen. CBS News picked it up in the last two days. Actually, maybe it was today. Uh, that employers, what's, what are they calling it? The dry, oh, just dry promotion. The idea that people are either being asked to or forced into taking larger roles with larger titles without greater pay. And we know as professionals, because we've been at this for a while, including the person who attended our event, who's only done this for three years. <laughs> these people, when we get on to the other side of whatever this is, who have now had greater responsibility with a greater title with no salary increase, they're going to go find a new fucking job that's actually going to pay them the salary. Because <laughs> I didn't do it on Monday, so I'm dropping that bomb now. Um, they're going to go find a new job. And like so once again, leadership teams have said, well, here's how we can fix our problem. You punted the problem. You have moved it 20 yards down the field, the problem. And this too is gonna come back and bite you in the butt. We are not just recruiters, sorcerers, and HR folks. We actually are the adults in the room, even though I don't sound like one right now. No more justs. 
Fuck that. I'm done. Uh, right here, mute. I, I like there that you, you can drop an f bomb, but you can't say the word ass yeah. instead of fuck. I heard, yeah, he said on our bots. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sitting here. Right the exact now. thing, Brian. <laughs> this, this just became a PG conversation that Maddie can attend. Oh wait a minute, sorry, didn't mean to invite her in the I room. Have, for dropping I have standards. I have standards. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that's good. That's thank you for filling me in. That's so that's so bad. We are not just recruiters or just sorcerers. Like that's crazy. We are Ken enough. We're yeah. yeah. We're, we're, also not, yeah. we're also not. We're also not separate. I got it. I'm just Ken. <laughs> we're uh, we're also not separate from the business. Um, I had a yeah. conversation with um, Richard Rosenau from One Model yesterday, and. Uh, he's like, look, there's a problem when you say, you know, the business needs and then HR needs or talent needs or recruiting needs. There's just a very subtle but powerful decoupling mm -hmm. of what our community does from the business. Yeah. Uh, right along with your just comment. You know, that goes back years, years ago, and I'm not blaming it's no blame at all. You know, when Libby Sartain became uh, Southwest Chief People Officer, uh, some of you may remember that there then was an influx whoa, from the HR from the HR people. I want to be a C two. Tongue in cheek. Um, I want to have. I want to have a seat. If if I'm a member of the C suite, I'm going to be invited to this. Have a seat at the table. And that's what you know. HR, you know, that in order for me to have a seat at the table, I have to be a chief something. I have to sit with with where the big people are. And this was roughly in the two thousand, really 2010, 2011 time frame. And and um, I finally realized that, and talk about the decoupling. Um, it's more. It's worse than just the decoupling, Jason. It's the belief that it's all about furniture. And and I say that tongue in cheek. <laughs> having right. a seat, having a seat at the table. And and I actually called it the Ethan Allen syndrome. Ethan Allen being a big furniture store. Um, you know the belief that okay, now that I have a C, I'm a chief human resources officer, chief talent officer, something of that ilk, anything of that ilk. I have now transported myself into this upper echelon of strategic thinkers and doers, all on the same level. So I have a question for this group and for the folks, and and this maybe you guys have covered this at other times, but when I think about, like Nikki's saying in the chat, when I think about having a voice, people are not rational. We are definitely rationalized, but we do like to see data to justify what we think. So beyond our funnel analytics, how many of us have any kind of analytics or metrics that then can tie our insights into the strategy, into the business? And if and if the answer is not good, then I'll just we, like I, I don't mean to pull the air no, out. I, but, this but, is but, I'm genuinely asking. But, but Jason, that, I mean that that's that that's a that's a very important question to ask. It it's simply um, and it goes back to I, I remember when I first got into the you know the metrics of the business in our space. Um, I, there's a book, um, one of the few business books I read, um, called The Great Game of Business by Jack Stack. It was written in 1981. And Stack uh, was one of the first leaders to um, bring financial education, finance education, down to the line. Mm -hmm. it, you know, Springfield. It was based out of Springfield Remanufacturing in, in Springfield, Missouri, and 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 all the workers there, we, all the machinists, they knew what how their output and the quality of their output because they knew what rework was, how that impacted from a basis point point of view. You know, you know, company performance. It's not hard to do it, but you have to. You do. It's really. It doesn't require a, a you know an MBA in finance to understand this stuff. It understands. It, it requires as us as TA leaders to go to the CFO and say, you know, sh show me your, you know, give me the three metrics that you speak to your board about that measure the health and wellness of the balance sheet. And then you can ask the simple question, I've got a task for you. You can say no, but I know you're going to want to say yes. 
let's recruiterize these metrics. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be directional. Because over time, as you start reporting on those on a quarterly basis, and incidentally, you you know, you know, it, it's it's a it's a good advice to um, you know, always report your metrics on a quarterly basis to look at seasonality issues and other issues that come up. But over time, you're going to come, you're, you're going to become better at it. The person who controls your budget is going to, you know, start oh, aligning what they do and what you do. You're going to start doing things like, okay, I know this position was budgeted at the 75th percentile, but we've consistently been able to you know, come in at the 65th percentile while, you know, improving equity. And so we have this delta that we saved, which we want to use for spot bonuses, other things that impact the stuff. And over time, it just recirculates and reiterates and regenerates. It's a process. It's not a, not, not, it's not a discrete event. I know I got along, Jason, but that's, no, that's how it's done. That's, I, I had as recently as this morning, I had a conversation with another recruiter and all the funnel metrics, I mean, they're tight. She's tight. She, and, you know, it was like, all right, well, do you know the strategic goals? Yes. Uh, I'm sure you have some sense of headcount. Yeah. All right. Well, which, which roles are most important to recruit for? How do you actually make sure that you're prioritizing those as opposed to, you know, the hiring manager who's the squeaky wheel? She's like, that's it. I don't know. I'm like, and the, maybe, and, the, maybe. and the irony there, Jason, is I, you know, for for all the companies we have, we we spend time building service level agreements (SLAs), and then we don't hold hold, hold people to them. <laughs> so, Going back to your accountability thing with the conferences, we're right back there, taking the action. I'm having a hard time in my brain right now because I hear Jason. I heard what you just said about this recruiter you had the conversation with, and then I'm seeing Jessica in the chat saying I was told that I didn't need to provide them because they didn't care about them. And my brain literally just about popped. Like, why do they not want them? Oh! They, Paul, did you have a stroke of genius? Or just a oh, stroke? I almost had a stroke. <laughs> like, that's... Just gonna stop. <laughs> Listen, no, I... Well, you you and I are on, this, on the same page. I... Um, uh, you were, they, they do want the numbers. They either don't know they want them or they're not thinking that you're yeah. going to get them, you know, that they're going to get them from you or they want you focused on something else. So, you know, back to having the, or voice they know they're not going to like it. Yeah. Right. Like, well, that's, yeah. Accepting the answer of we don't want them is okay. Here's my chair. You're playing the furniture dance. Like just, you got to still get the numbers. Yeah. By the way, and, I did and, do. And, a, and, 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 and the thing about metrics, you know, the first time you, if you've never measured metrics, if you've never measured performance, the first time it's it's a massive slap in the face <laughs> because you're never going to be better than you thought you were. Yeah. Oh, it, well, and if if you're just starting, I'll, I'll add one thing to that, which is be very careful, v like share them very closely before you roll them out. Numbers, we all, numbers are, they all look good from far. Oh, there's, there's numbers over yonder. Phenomenal. Up close, it feels like micromanagement. It feels like a lack of control. You're going to manage me to my numbers. You're, and there are a lot of people who do that, who are really bad about saying, oh, now you've measured this. So I'm going to, I'm going to track you to it. So if you, if you bring numbers out and somebody's got that not in their chest because they're feeling micromanaged and the numbers maybe don't make them look good they're you're done the the knives are going to be out yeah and, 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 and to put an analogy it's like a kid coming home with a bad report card and showing it to their parents well this, so this is my question nicole i'm wondering you have worked you worked at a place at a scale that i can't imagine and, mm -hmm. and damn too but like right like i the largest group i've actually functionally been a consultant at is like 1200 Right. And so I don't know what the size of the Google recruiting team was when you're there, but it probably was even more than that. And that's just the size of the company that I was with. Can you what's it like? To, how metrics driven was your role or your group or your team? Can you talk a little bit about that without? Oh, yeah. Something? That was my every day. Every day I was like my whole role was metrics driven. Like I had a team goal. Each of my ICs had a goal and they had 
what they called pipeline bent, uh, building benchmarks for representation. So their like application creates and phone interviews had to be at a certain percentage for each of the demographics, Black Plus, Latinx, um, Women, and Native Plus. So I looked at that data constantly. And then I was also responsible for the hiring for the product area. So I, I was responsible for a, like, the Google Assistant, BARD, GEO, which is um, like Google Maps, and then commerce and payments. So I had to look at this system. We called it delivery against demand, like how my team was delivering against what the demand was for the business. So for example, when I, at the end of 2021, my team was like in the red. So I had to work like week over week with them and like micro, kind of like micromanage their cues with my other, my associate lead and her direct reports and be like, how are we going to get your candidates into the process faster is are they being or are, are we not getting the right candidates which was the problem so I had to partner with sourcing and make sure that we were making sure that the pipeline was accurate for the roles that we were hiring for but like that was my like every single day I was looking at dashboards and analyzing data and figuring out like where were we missing where my team missing especially on the DEI side, because I was one of the ambassadors for my organization called it was America's. But you also have to just take into consideration that my team, my manager only focused on mid to senior level software engineers. And his org was probably, I think there was like 50 recruiters and then he had four like me uh, leads. And then we each had, I think I had 13 to 14 recruiters and sourcers under me. And then, and then my other directs, my other um, leads probably had this like maybe a little bit more than me or a little bit less. So for my team, like annually, I probably hired 400 software engineers, maybe a little bit more, but that was just like one small piece of the pie, right? Because I'm only doing L4, L5, which is the mid to senior level software engineers, but everything at Google is metrics based and not all of the data was always correct. Like I had to like mm. watch it pretty regularly to make sure, cause like the systems didn't speak to each other. Like that's one of the major issues that I had is that like our, a lot of the systems didn't really speak to each other really well. So I had to like understand what was going on and like really look at each of my individual ICs like cues and especially with their DEI metrics. Uh, and Nicole, two questions on that one, and slightly tangent point in this. When 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 new recruiters are hired at Google, mm -hmm. are is is financial competence something that's assessed during the process? What do you What do you mean financial? So to the extent of understanding, you know, understand metrics is is. No, I, okay. I definitely not. Like I, when I interviewed candidates, I never asked them like metrics because you, you know the Google interview process. You're asked, I'm asking them GCA question, general cognitive okay. ability. Like, tell me, you have to create a staffing team in the middle of nowhere, and you have to hire a hundred software engineers. How would you do it? Even like my my, if I think about my ICs right now, like if I was still at Google. I don't know if they could understand everything that I would be telling. Like they knew like pass through rates, right? They knew like yeah. I have a back end software engineer. It's probably like one out of seven. My goal is my goal for this quarter is 10, right? So I need to have yeah. what 70 on sites in order to hit that, hit yeah. that goal. Like they understood that, but I don't know if they're going to understand like the, like the business, like the whole business part of it would they need to my no not necessarily if they want to be a lead sure yeah but they, but they also need to like understand their pipeline for dei because again dei at google like if you didn't hit your dei metrics you like weren't going to exceed expectations that was like a big big thing at uh google and that was hard it's hard right like you're you're responsible for that front of the funnel which is the app created phone interview and like drilling that into them was definitely like very, very challenging for sure. But they had to look at that those numbers themselves because they had access to that data. So hold on. Cool. Would, would you say that um, 
with all that knowledge and now you're interviewing at non-fang companies yeah what is the how does other companies when you come with that data is it over their heads be, or like what's the reception from them bringing into that data into that interview so that was one of the things with Dana Farber that I interviewed that I talked about in the presentation on Monday. I am one of the questions I asked them. I said, what is one thing that you're afraid of with someone from Google coming into Dana Farber? And they're like the access to the data that you have, you're not going to have that here. And how would you, we just don't have those systems. Like you'd have to get like talk to other people. And I said, well, if I knew, if I know the right people, I can get the data, but I also could track, like track it on my own. But, but even when I, when I worked at a startup, I didn't, I was also just, I was an IC, um, not just an IC, but I was an IC and I didn't need to really like look at all of those things as I, we weren't metrics based at a startup. And even in my phone interview with Dana Farber, the manager was like, wow, you're very metrics, metrics focused. So they were more worried that you either wouldn't be able to do the job because you didn't have access or you were going to push for stuff you didn't have. Then maybe you might help them actually up their analytics game. Maybe. It's, sh it's shocking, Jason. It's shocking. <laughs> I, right, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. You well, can't make decisions I, without data. Like I wouldn't be, I like from rectal like, database, my, right? Like I wouldn't be able if my team didn't have enough openings to fill. I need to pivot them to do other things to help elsewhere. Like little things like that, I did quite a bit. Like my P product areas didn't have roles, I'd pivot them to help out with like cloud, for example. So like if I didn't understand how to analyze or look at that data you're not like, I wouldn't be good at my job. See, so, so, so you were demonstrating real TA leadership skills, not just average. Right. That's so, shocking. So here's, here's a problem. question. Nothing so, more threatening. Nothing more threatening. And someone who knows what the hell they're, I almost said the bad word, what they're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. but this is what I wonder about sometimes. Like, so when Dan and I had conversations last fall or Jonathan Kidder, who was, who was here in Minneapolis, who works at Amazon, like with the for the places that I have been involved in is such a minute scale to Nicole what you've been in or what Dan was at at Amazon and Meta. Like I think about the the engagements that I've had. Like we are literally talking about here's what the applicant tracking system is. We're not asking all of the other questions because there is a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, like the, the the current group that I just started with. We're, we're 26 people in North and South America and. We need software engineers, period. Like that's going to be it. We need to hire four to six this year. It might be 10 to 12. There isn't necessarily a request or a demand or a thought about, about that sort of level of stuff yet because they're not, they're, we're just getting up and running where the product is, the new product is rolled out. So like sometimes I don't even think about the stuff that you were doing every hour. I won't think about for six months. And so this is why I try to ask these questions because you have all you have been at a level that I don't grasp. That I so thank you for answering these questions because yeah. I think for a lot of us sometimes when we read or hear articles or people who are speaking at national events, if they're coming from a fang group, but I work for a man, I don't, but like if I work for a manufacturing company here in central Minnesota of 200 people in a population that is probably <laughs> less than four percent not white. Um, like we start having different, sometimes it's hard to relate. So that's why I appreciate you answering these questions because I, you're teaching me stuff. I don't know. But you know, the but, cool thing about the cool thing about, I'll, I'll show you, you go first, Nick, then, then I'll, then I'll. No, but you could, fi you could figure out, but I'm on David Fernandez. Like I agree with him. It's not just about the data, right? It, you do need to ha tell the story. That's why in any of my one-on-ones with my team, like, what like what's happening with this candidate give me context because those stories i would talk about in their performance reviews because no it's it's not all about data but it is it is like those little anecdotal things that you need to talk about and yeah, storytelling yeah. is a huge thing and how you present that data if you're yeah. in a performance review the narrative yes really good leaders know how to uh give a good narrative regardless mm -hmm. of the data of what it's telling you 
And that is a skill that is some people are really, really good at it. And some people are not. So um, I've got a quick follow up because now I'm on a roll. Now, I don't mean to steal the show here today, but here's we've got like 10 minutes left. Nicole, I got another yes, question. You do. No, I don't. I want to learn today. Yes, you do. Paul, it's all about Paul learning today. Um, sometimes we'll see like if if it's if it's Amy Miller on LinkedIn, right? She will. People will say to her, well, you work at Amazon and it's got to be freaking easy for you to recruit. Blah, 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 blah. No. Hold on. And then we have some of us from startups, though, small tech companies who don't have a brand, who are unknown, they don't know you exist. Can Nicole, can you talk about sort of the left, the, the different parts of the brain that you have to use depending on where you are? Because I do have a, an opinion that, man, like if I had a fame reputation, it wouldn't be easy, but my emotions say it would be easier. Now, I don't think about at the moment that, that, that there's baggage that comes with that or mm -hmm. that people's motivations are different to go work at a fame group than it is at a startup in the Midwest. Can you talk about how your experiences with those two, how sometimes either they are similar or they are very different? So if we're talking 2018, when I was an, like an individual contributor recruiter, it was like easy for me to sell Google. Like I didn't really have that many declines. It was like the total package. Google did pay lower in base salary because we paid in the 75th percentile for base salary, but the total comp I think was in the 90th percentile mm -hmm. and total comp was the, the equity plus the bonus. Mm -hmm. And typically the bonus was 15%, 15 to 20%. Now, post 2018, when I became a manager and with my individual contributors, it's really hard to, it was really hard to sell Google. We had significantly more declines because it's not like the shiny, cool, like sexy project or place to work at anymore. Cause you have all of these other companies, regardless if it's like Facebook or meta would kill us in the, in the base salary and like the total compensation because they were up leveling all candidates. So my L4 candidate interviewing at Google was getting an L5 senior software engineering role and I think that like fucked Google, in fact, Facebook in the long run because they were overpaying all of these engineers. And I don't think that they were doing very well. And then they had all these massive layoffs. Yeah. And then also all these like startups are coming out with like this cool, like cool AI stuff. And plus like all the benefits at Google, like free lunch, massage, et cetera. Like nobody cares about that anymore with like COVID and like being able to work from home. So like the cool things that Google or Meta, et cetera, had all these other companies have them too, or they're like, you can work remotely. Right. And Google was like hardcore. Like we have to be hybrid now. It's like, we expect you to be in three days a week and we're monitoring it because true story, they're monitoring it. It was part, becoming part of your performance reviews. Yep. So like things like, like that, but I think it depends, it depends on the time. If they're talking like, early like 2018 and before like I could sell Google ease I like barely got declines if I did it was to it was to Facebook but then after that it was like all of the candidates are getting cool startup offers and we couldn't even on the comp if the candidates would be like whatever I want to work on this cool project I don't care about the compensation yeah and, and within then, reason yeah, yeah yeah and you know and I I've done I think seven startups I've done time at Amazon. I've done time at Apple. Um, I think I told you, Nicole, I, I turned down Google. Google, like, yeah. 20 years ago. Here's the thing. It's it's th th There's a saying, the grass is always greener over the septic tank. And and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and that applies to... See, I don't have to curse Paul, do I? But that applies to, you know, many job search, you know, so good. companies. You know, you know, may, maybe it's 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 uh, as a result of you know the foosball, fully stock kitchen era, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that uh, COVID, uh, remote work, you know, and anything else has done, it's 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 for many, it's reprioritized. What's important? Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm. Google, it, it, it look. It, there is a, and there, there there is a, a severe benefits to working at any company, large or small, and it's and it's really up to you know each person what you make of it. 
that's going to set yourself up and you make choices. You know, we all, we've all made choices to go to certain companies or to not go to certain companies to, you know, move to another country or not move to another country. But that it's, those individual things work for us. I think the important it's... thing, the important thing in this, in, in this era that we're, we're in right now is, you know, find something that works pretty well for you. Paul, I actually got that like question when I was interviewing mm. and it wasn't a big fan company. And they said, how, uh, isn't it easy for everybody to want to work for the Googles and Metas yeah. and Amazons of the world? Don't you have it easy? Don't you have applicants just falling out of the grapevine? And it's oh. just a different sell. And every single company mm -hmm. has a different level of um, hurdles that they have to operate in. I had a gentleman by Jeff Tamadna on the podcast, and I'll throw it in the chat, but he talks about the three P's. In any organization, small or large, you have to do the three P's in recruiting. You got to figure out the price that you're willing to pay for the role. You need to figure out the profile that you can pay that person in that price range. And then do you have that process to go and find that profile? So like the three P's. Google, Amazon, Meta, they have a certain type of profile and a certain amount of price that they can play with. A small startup, they have to have a find that profile in that price range that yeah. they can play in, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So it was super interesting to hearing from that, but he put it in a perspective of the three pre P's, profile, price, and then process. You have a process in place to do that. Yeah. Every company has their hurdles. It's just mm -hmm. what... Like I put it in perspective in baseball terms, the Oakland athletics have this one of the smallest um, salary budgets. They can't compete with the Yankees or the Red Sox from a dollar standpoint. So they got to figure out how to play in a different game and figure out the talent that they can actually pay. They should make a movie out of that. Oh, they, I think they did. <laughs> oh, okay. um, no, so, here's so for, for the sorcerers, the sorcerers on the call, do we now start a clock? uh we'll, we'll call it five months to from today because six months from today will be the end of the six month of reddit going public by the way the stock price was set to go at 34 it's trading at 51 so if we assume that they've got a six if you have a six month lockup um do we do we start contacting reddit software engineers in five months one month before the six month lockup just ask them well, yes, but that that's part of, you know, looking at, I, I call it PEST, political, economic, social, technological. Well, slow down. Do that again. PEST. Every, every, every recruiter, every TA leader needs to be a PEST. You need to, on a quarterly basis, track the political, economic, social, and technological changes, initiatives, innovations, yep. and, and, and determine, are they going to impact how we recruit? That's why I we say that. That's why we reset metric clocks every quarter because that's the only way to look at seasonality. Yep. So, so, so I guess ultimately all these things to, to answer your question, well, yes, we do. This is, this is the evolved you know, recruiter, the, the, the evolved TA leader is, is, is taking all these um, streams of data and, 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 and scenarios and what have you, because by the way, that's that five month time frame is really going to coincide here in the states with one of the ugliest political times in my life. What do you mean? I don't know. We'll talk about it then. But I hope these we don't are talk all, about these, it at all. But you know, but look, look but, but unfortunately, we have to because that because yep. that means we have to look ahead for what laws may be coming down one way or the other. We have to be aware of those and how those impact mobility, how those impact office work remote work, commuting work, you name it. So, so and I'm looking at the clock again. So I want to toss something out because I, you, you all know that I talk about this probably every, if not every other time we get together, like the economy of things. Yeah. So the Fed has its meeting yesterday. They say that they still see three rate cuts this year. Yeah. They say that they say GDP at 2.1, GDP at 2.1 in 2020 pre-COVID. So like before we, we knew what that was. The economy was going to slow, they thought, that year to a 1.7. And if you think about to how I started my session um, on Monday was, and 2020 was going to be a really freaking busy year. So if we are going to have a 2.1 GDP this year, if we're going to have three rate cuts, meaning money will be a little easier, less expensive to borrow, 
doesn't the hiring employment scene pick up or am I still just hoping and looking at rainbows of puppies and kittens? Um, it, 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 it should pick up. But then again, you know, we're, we're still left for the, uh, we, we have, <laughs> This is where you're, you're a couple of years back. Warren Buffett lamented the change, the, the changeover of the uh, uh, stock market for being uh, an investment platform to a speculation platform. Yeah. There's still an, an inordinate amount of speculation taking place. So you know, we should see more hiring, uh, but then again, we 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 said that in the past. Uh, so as, we're long, as, long, as long as it's not irrational hiring, you know, we'll, we're I think we'll be in good shape. Was Angie investing or speculating when she bought Reddit stock? I suspect in speculating. <laughs> Wait, did she drop off? It, for those, for those, she did. Who, yep. Probably for those, for those who are here, I'm putting in the chat. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, puts out uh, uh, a pretty frequently something called the Beige Book, ten times a year. Uh, yeah, and so uh, you can go here. This just looks at the summary. Just go get to know the Beige Book, everybody here. It's it's a really it's a really yes. good. Uh, overview of how the economy might impact what it is we do and the regions in which you live because it's always yes. a little bit different yes and there are 14 regions i think i've been doing it since 2009 every quarter five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve regions i'm sorry anyway awesome. dan well, I appreciate everybody attending. <laughs> <laughs> no, baby, yeah, but maybe in two weeks, maybe I'll put the little guy or girl, you know, on, on the screen. And that's screen. the thing, you know, kudos. There was no reveal party. That's right. This is that's a mystery. Awesome. So we'll we'll see what happens. Thank you for the support. Uh, next couple of weeks, we have, a, like I said, the conference on April 2nd. So blast it out to the community. Get involved in the Hire Easy community and the academy. Your uh, wonderful Steve Levy is actually doing a couple courses in there um, on a couple cool topics. So take wonderful. advantage of that free, <laughs> free educational resources. Um, but uh, we have recruiter therapy in two more weeks. So we'll see you guys in uh, 14 days. And bring friends. Bring, and bring friends. friends. Ryan, tell, sure. us, tell, us, tell us what you want to talk about. For yes. sure. Open awesome. the work, baby. Put the banner up. All right. Bye, team. Guys, thank you so much. Bye. See ya.